I'm Daniela Atkinson. I'm Massimo Recupero, and welcome to our next episode of Muck It Up, our final one for this school year. And today we are at Smoke and Barrel, a new Texas style barbecue restaurant. Tommy, what made you want to open Smoke and Barrel, a southern restaurant here in Kingston? Well, uh, to be honest, I never really liked barbecue food um, because the only barbecue I'd eaten was what we get exposed to up here in Canada, which is not real barbecue. A few years ago, my friend was doing his PhD in philosophy down at the University of Memphis, and I went down for a four-day visit, uh, which just turned into a four-day food tour. Um, and I immediately fell in love with authentic southern barbecue. When did you start this restaurant open it? So we opened last year during the pandemic, yeah. uh, but the research for it began about nine months before that. I actually spent, uh, I, uh, I took seven separate trips down to the southern United States and Midwest and toured the seven different barbecue regions uh, to learn as much as I could about authentic barbecue. So I took a little bit from all seven of those regions and designed my menu and my restaurant ar around it. So how has it been opening up a new restaurant during COVID? Yeah. Oh, terrible. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> uh, honestly, all things considered, we're doing great. You know, we're doing, you know, we're busy. We're busy enough. Um, you know, we're in no danger of the doors closing. But obviously, I didn't plan uh, to open in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, we op we opened we April. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, don't, you, yeah. you plan for everything, but you don't plan for a pa worldwide pandemic. I don't think anyone <laughs> We ended up opening April 29th last year just for takeout and delivery, but we've been uh, quite busy right off the hop. So, you know, you have Tommy's Diner. How is being in this pair of Kingston differ from, you know, being over there with Tommy? It's a completely different ball game out here. Um, downtown, you know, we're open late every single night. Here in the West End, uh, we're closed by 11 o'clock. Um, and it, it's, it's a different crowd, you know, it's, a, it's an older demographic out here. Uh, we're not in the middle of a busy bar hub out here, but we're in the middle of uh, kind of a shopping, businessy area. What is your favorite thing on the menu or favorite thing that you've brought from your trip? Oh, that's tough. That, yeah, as I, as I said, I'm, uh, everything is super regional. Um, and, I've, and I took a little bit of everything. Um, and I'm going to let you try a little bit of everything. So well, the first thing I'm going to let you ha uh, try is our uh, Memphis wet nachos. So if you go down to Memphis, the nachos there aren't like nachos here with melted cheese covered in vegetables. It's literally uh, pork on nachos with cheese sauce and a little barbecue sauce. Perfect. Now we jazzed it up. We, we jazzed it up uh, and put a little uh, fresh cut jalapeno seed in, which is common through Texas. And then we put a drizzle of my, uh, my own uh, homemade Alabama white barbecue sauce. Now, as far as the entrees, I'm gonna let you try our Alabama chicken. Again, uh, the Alabama sauce is meant for chicken. Uh, we're gonna do some Texas style brisket. You will not get any more authentic tasting brisket uh, than this brisket. Um, we trim it the way they do in Texas. Uh, we rub it with a Texas style rub and we use a red oak to smoke it. We're also gonna try some ribs and I'm gonna recommend that you go ahead and dip those in a vinegar sauce. Very much a Carolinas type thing. Um, and at the end of it, you're definitely gonna try, a lot of people don't know this, um, banana pudding. Have you, yeah, exactly. Banana pudding is as much a part of barbecue as ribs as ribs is. Wow. I love the ambiance in here. Do you want to talk a little bit about you know how you chose to decorate it? So the, when I went on tour, I had no idea what I wanted the restaurant to look like. So that was a huge part, trying to figure out what I wanted it to look like. Uh, I've had friends come in who are barbecue uh, aficionados, we'll say, uh, walk in and say they feel like they're in a Texas-style uh, smokehouse. Uh, right there, if you look over there, we've got saucing stations. So uh, in non-COVID times, you'd be able to go up and just pump your own sauces so you can get a little bit of eat sauce on your own. You also notice two big canisters. That's because every authentic Southern barbecue place has canisters of sweet tea and iced tea that you go help yourself to. 
We've got our big, uh, our big we call her Big Mama, our smoker over there. That, that, that girl was built in, uh, built in Memphis, Tennessee and we trucked it up here. We can do 1,400 pounds of meat at one time on that. Oh if you look over at the far wall, there's a old mattress on the wall with lights on it. So that's an actually an homage to old Southern uh, poor barbecues. So while I was on tour, I went and bought, uh, I bought, bought myself a camera and I uh, did a photo, uh, was a photo journal of the whole thing. So if you look at my catering trailer or my catering van or the big wall outside, it's uh, actually a collage of pictures that I took myself while I was on these tours. Oh, wow, the food, the signs, the locations, the cities, um, the smokers. So uh, yeah, before you leave, make sure to check that out yeah, out there. Definitely. Yeah. And not only are we mocking it up today, but we're also gonna be reading your juicy confessions from this school year. And we cannot wait to read them. <laughs> So good. Okay. Your confessions. Confession. I convinced a Domino's driver to drive myself and two friends to stages one night. I was also wearing a pretty slutty top. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was the next confession. I'm talking to two guys and not gonna lie, I like the toxic one. It's always a toxic man. There's always. There's something exciting about it. I don't know. The danger. <laughs> okay. Um, I passed out at the Hoko football game in first year. Honestly, drink a little too much. Yeah, I it happens. Yeah, it happens. I hate my entire program. They're all a bunch of kiss asses. <laughs> oh, I'm really sorry for this person. You can you take the first guess. commerce. I'm just going to assume. I don't know. Yeah, I, I believe that. <laughs> okay. Was running laps around the boys senior soccer team for field hockey practice and I slipped and fell in the mud and my pants fell down as I was sliding. Everybody saw and laughed. No, I would not want to be that person. No. Okay, we just got given a lot more food. Yeah, a lot more food. I'm so, so excited. Okay, I'm going to start with the brisket mac and cheese okay, because yeah. I love mac you and know, cheese. I'm going to steal some of that as well. So. Yeah. To die for. So, slid on Albert at night on the ice and slid all the way under the hood of a car with someone inside and I lost, this is a run-on sentence, and I had lost my AirPods and I had to crawl around until I found them and the guy in the car just watched the whole time and didn't say anything. That was a sentence, that was quite a lot. Um, I guess in a way the guy not saying anything was better to prevent like some second hand Was it? it? Okay, but it's like if you if saw If someone it, slid under my car while it was like snowing like with ice, yeah. I... I would say something, like I'd get yeah. out of the car, yeah. I'd make sure they're okay. Yeah, I, guess I think the fact that they <laughs> stayed is worse. You ready? Take a bite. Mm. Was drunk at a club and ran, <laughs> and ran into the coat check desk, but oops, turns out it was on wheels and it flew across the club and everybody in line was like, what the and I was mortified, but I was also so drunk. So I gave them a random coat check ticket that I found on the ground, thinking that it was mine. And it was a random rag and bone leather jacket. So I just left it at the front door security because I couldn't go back to face the coat I check people. I wouldn't want to go back either. <laughs> this is main character shit, that but is like- main character energy. But the main character energy of like the person that's in like the up and coming quirky yeah. like film. Yeah, well, so many. everybody knows some coat checks are on wheels. Yes. Yeah, Don't run into it. Yep. <laughs> the best bathrooms to use the washroom in on campus were the handicapped bathrooms in the J Duck second floor beside QP. Good to know. Except, what if you're not handicapped? I probably shouldn't be doing that. Thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> I appreciate okay. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I used to live in the J-Duck, and I have never used that bathroom. Oh, this one makes me sad. Okay. I low-key hate being a woman of color at Queens because at the end of the day, the guys here always choose the white girls over us. Yeah, that is unfortunate, and it's unfortunate that Queens guys in general are stereotyped a certain way. Yeah. And although I know um, like so many amazing Queens guys, I do understand why you would feel this way because I have also seen the not so amazing Queens yeah, like guys. I have friends who are people of color Queens and I hear a lot of stories and it shouldn't be that way and hopefully that's something that changes in the future. Yeah, I am sorry to whoever feels this way because you know what? You're beautiful, you're amazing, yeah. and one day someone will appreciate you for the and person you that you are no matter what. And if it's not Queens guys, then you will find better than Queens guys, trust me. <laughs> 
the next confession is also a kind of sad one that can lead ahead. It says, I'm genuinely afraid I'm going to go through my full undergrad experience without ever dating anyone. Okay. I know it's a big part of undergrad. Like, a lot of my friends are in yeah. relationships, so like, upper years. But that doesn't have to be the whole experience, you know? That doesn't have to make or break your undergrad. But I understand, yeah. like, wanting that. I understand wanting that and wanting that experience. And to be honest, you will never in your life be in a situation where you are surrounded by so many people your age who are single. So put yourself out there, yeah. download Tinder, download Bumble, Grinder, whatever yeah. you want. <laughs> Trust me, there are a lot of people out there. there. Yeah. And you know, if you don't find it, then it'll come. Maybe it's just undergrad isn't the time. Exactly. Now we're going to move on to the meat platter that's almost as big as my head. Um, and over here we have some brisket, which is like half fat and half lean, which is exciting. Um, then we have the chicken with the Alabama white sauce. Alabama right? white sauce. Yeah, I'm really excited to try And that. some ribs as well, which look amazing. The ribs is calling my name, I have to say. Okay, <laughs> let's all grab a rib then. Yes. Rib cheers. Rib cheers. Rib cheers. Rib plank. Wow. That's definitely the maple syrup sauce. You can like, the smoker, amazing. Like you can taste the yes. smoky flavor. Yeah. It concerns me how low some girls set the bar for guys. Some things are just common decency. Retweet, snaps for that one. If I could snap, I'd be snapping right now. <laughs> I just can't. Honestly, set your bar as high as you want yes. and some guy will eventually meet it. Yes. And until he does, it's not worth it. Yeah. yeah. The next confession says, sometimes when I want free drinks, I just keep on calling those snobby commies that flex daddy's money poor, and it always, almost always works. I mean, do what you gotta do. So earlier when I said commies, like the commerce people would. Yeah. This I can is why. That means commerce. Okay. Yeah. This is why. Okay. Yeah. So as if that wasn't enough, we have dessert now. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you're giving us? So as I mentioned earlier, banana pudding is as much a part of barbecue as ribs and brisket. Everywhere through all seven regions uh, serves banana pudding. Uh, we got another dessert that's just coming out of the oven though, and it's a butter fried peach cobbler. Ooh. So I walked into this, I walked into this little barbecue joint in Alabama. And I wasn't hungry for barbecue. I'd already had five meals that day. I said, well, I'd like to try your peach pie. And this lovely old lady says, well, honey, would you like that? Would you like that buttered or would you like it with ice cream? And I was like, whoa, excuse me, you're buttering pie down here? She's like, well, of course, Shug, we always butter our pie. I was like, can I have both? And she's like, well, of course you can, hon. So we got a nice butter fried peach cobbler coming out. But first, give this banana pudding a try. Yes, I'm ready to dig into this and be the next few guys it's like all cream at this point. You have to dig down. You have to get all layers. Not you, but you should dig all layers. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. I went out with this guy a few times, and we really hit it off. I really liked him. I thought things were going well until one day he ghosted me, and I didn't know why. I thought that maybe it was because he happened to meet a lot of my friends and maybe got freaked out. But then it kicked in two days later when something started to feel really bad down there. Yeah, it turns out he might have given me something and ghosted me for that reason. Uh, I don't know how to respond to that one. Um, um, I hope that person got it all sorted out. I'm sure they did. Okay. I'm sure everything um, was okay. And ghosting you was not the right thing to do. Like, you should have been up and honest. Yeah. Ooh, this one's a question, actually. Oh, okay. And it says, any advice on meeting someone if you're single? We kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. But dating apps. <laughs> dating apps? Thing. Yeah. Um, what else what would you say? Like, specific to Kingston. COVID's hard. Um, obviously... You're not supposed to be going out and meeting new people, um, but in Kingston, it's very easy to do that anyway in terms of just like, you're always around people. Yeah. Um, friends of friends, going to the bars, just put yourself out there, like, yeah. honestly. Being, being open to new crowds, you know, as COVID safe as you can be. Yeah. When you, there's the opportunity to meet new people, then you know, there's the opportunity to meet Peach cobbler, cobbler buttered peach cobbler, cobbler with ice cream. And this is on the butter. Okay, well, I'm just gonna start with the ice cream. Which is amazing. Wow, okay. Yeah. Final confession, guys. Hopefully, it's a good one. My roommate told me I moaned Owen Wilson's name in my sleep last night. Or last week. I feel like your brain doesn't automatically go to Owen Wilson. 
when you're dreaming? I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of other names that Did I can think about moaning in my sleep. <laughs> Owen Wilson is not one of them, but you know what? That's okay, everyone's got a type. That was the end of our confessions. Yes. Thank you for sending those in because you made me laugh many a time. Yeah, that last one especially, that really got us out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, our last one of the year, of the school yeah. year. Yeah, and this will be my last mukbang ever. This is your last I'm graduating, ever. so. No. Also, just one more thank you for Smoking Rail for having us tonight because honestly, it was delicious and I will yeah. definitely be back here. Definitely, and don't forget that you can order Smoke and Barrel through Skip the Dishes, Uber Eats, or even DoorDash if you want. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us again.